um, stun so that they don't have to worry about Doom getting his Doom off or Brewmaster getting his Primal split off in the team fight, and that doesn't really happen until OD gets a Scythe of Vice. It does give them a lot of late game, and again, it does give them more damage to deal with or for Faceless Void, but at the same time, he takes a lot of time to ramp up, as does Faceless Void. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll, we'll start things off in the top lane with some shenanigans, a bit of fissure blocking, just to keep this creep way back, and it actually gets blocked all the way to the tower, thanks to a uh, an early fidget coming out from fog then that'll keep this wave pulled back nice and far brax gets a couple guaranteed last hits under his tower but much like brax on the offlane's getting farm and cs bulldog in his offlane on the doom he should do fairly well at bottom as well at the same time while sneaking in mid he's actually getting constantly spammed by drunken haze um, <laughs> and that's a very annoying for sneaking and he was like attacking uphill too so we see Panda actually dominating the OD in terms of CS5 and 1 compared to only yep. two last hits for Sneaky. He's so. completely mana depleted now, but once you if you use too many astrals on him, he get, you get down his mana pool, he actually regains mana through that. So it kind of works against you at some point if you're using too many uh, astral imprisonments on a Brewmaster. If you get his mana pool down to zero, and well, he gets down to like five and he has full mana, then suddenly he gets intelligence back and has full mana because it's percentage based. So EGM and Brax having some shenanigans around the Seder spawn and this just leaves Loda to free farm taking a little bit of damage because he does have to take the creeps at the tower but Brax is getting a lot of experience denied to him. Yep. Alright, well uh, EGM is can't really zone out Brax on his own, especially Brax. Poor Man Shield already has a magic stick up and a couple tangos. And so. backtrack. Yeah. This. <laughs> You can right click away, but you're gonna lose this battle. He's doing like 20 damage per right click, and when you backtrack, it, it's a big flat zero, so. This is not a clash that EGM's gonna win here. Until Loader offers some killing power, it's just, you're not getting kills on this wall. I don't Void's, think you're getting them anyway. Stats are just a little ridiculous. 75 damage with just a pro man shield and a magic stick. And on top of that, he has 663 HP with only one branch, and he has five armor, yep. and 300 move speed. I don't know, what can you do, man? No, it's it's definitely Void's strength is, I feel, largely in like his, his base stats. His base damage especially. We've seen Void's go mid. When you can solo mid a hero like Void, something is maybe wrong. But uh, we'll see some aggression come out of the top lane. Brax getting gooed up. The chain goo is there. The stun as well. He does not backtrack anything just yet. Here come the chain goos. They've got two on him now. Third coming soon. And nope, they're going to go back. They don't want to commit to this skill. They don't know where the Earth. No, they see the Earthshaker bottom lane. That's first blood. Pugner as well as Earthshaker team up there and... They take down Bulldog at bottom lane, so it's now V getting first blood. They tried to go in on top in the void, but just didn't have the damage output. I didn't see it initially, but it just looked like a conch shot and perhaps a fissure block. I mean, I don't know, Bulldog even has boots and a style shield, but I'm not able to escape the clutches of Pugna, ES, and Sky. Such a long range initiate. To potentially, if you coordinate it well, you can kill someone in a fissure with just fissure and sky rifle ultimate. Yeah. So we'll see if we pull that off later into the game. Well, S4, he's not having the most fun at this middle lane, but hey, he'll be uh, he'll be able to get enough out of this lane that he's next. I mean, he's got 15 CS. He's on par with the OD, so he's not having fun in terms of getting his mana constantly depleted, getting constantly astral spam. But whenever he gets that mana back from the uh, intelligence stolen, he just immediately drunken hazes the OD. Give him that, just that slightly tougher time here in the mid lane. And he's only had to use one Tango too. Generally you'll see Brewmasters and other melee heroes constantly harassed. And Brax taking a little bit of damage from Loda and company, but Loda's too low to pursue. Yeah. Brax right now is on top of this lane. Not only is he looking healthy here, he's got nine magic stick charges. Like, they can't even think about going on him because of all these charges. He's just gonna go walk right up to him and just take fights if he really wants to. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Bulldog did manage to find a double damage room with Boots. And level 2 Scorch Earth, he's actually trying to take the fight to Fog. A couple right clicks could put Fog dangerously low. He's going to turn around, miss the Fissure. And uh, Bulldog will be pushed away. I mean, he was using that defensively regardless. They weren't ever going to be looking, getting, finding a kill there on Bulldog, but it was still uh, a miss nonetheless as uh, some pressure gets put back onto Alliance here as uh, Bulldog's going to be a bit careful about where he steps, even with this DD rune. So Arcane already up on Pugna, and that means this tower is going to come under a siege very, very... Uh, early on yeah, into the top game. lane, Chen's actually going for a gank, he rotates in, Brax used the time walk already, has these 10 charges, he pops him now in the test of faith, hits big, hits hard, brings down the faceless void. That looked like it was like close to a max damage yeah. one and it didn't get backtracked, jeez. That's... RNG not working the way of Brax there, times two. Well, that gets uh, 
Alliance on the board. Gets them their first kill here. Concussive Shot coming out at bottom lane on Bulldog here as they're still just chipping away on this tower. Korok trying to get an early tier one for Na'Vi USA. But uh, not finding it just yet. And at top lane, Brax is going to be careful. The exact same gank is making its way once again towards him. Magic Missile with a Chen. Does have the time walk this time to get closer to his tower. So he's not pushed up too far. And seems to have an okay idea of where he needs to position himself so he doesn't actually get caught out here. Bristol only has mana for a goo and uh, cool spray though. They're gonna spam a couple goos here. They want to go for this time walk back to the tower. They think about diving, but load it a bit low on mana. Only has the 40 mana to throw around. And he's got fast treads here, but he can't really fight this too much. So rejoin the middle lane with S4 versus Snaking. S4 on the Brewmaster, 19 CS to the 32 now of Snaking on the OD. OG's picked up a glove of the haste, is looking for a Midas Rush as uh, it comes flying through. That was uh, just looking to it's like block the the path to this rune here and Fogged will uh, maybe secure it for himself. So he'll see S4 there, take it up and uh, unfortunately for Snaking he couldn't get it. But Snaking's full HP, full mana more or less, and should be just fine. 1437. Wow. Getting right clicked out by Admiral Bulldog. <laughs> what are you going to do? Need some body blocks here. He's not going to find it. Bulldog gets one. He gets a little six. He can do Korok here. Korok now in all sorts of trouble. This is going to be two. Admiral Bulldog. He finds a double kill in the off lane. That's huge. He also that got a little massive. lucky that he switched from the Seder to the Alpha Wolf. Creep. That right click yeah. damage definitely helped well, in taking down the rotate on the Skyrack. Brax is brought down by a bottom. Oh. Admiral Bulldog overstays his welcome, and one more right click, he gets brought down after the double kill. So, action of plenty in both top and bottom lane. He did buy Gloves of Haste before he died, so. Not that bad, especially if they get this T1 tower out of it, and they kill Brax yet again, as you mentioned. Much, much needed kills coming out of the line. The boy and the dude both being brought down, and a T1 tower to boot. This is without Nav, who picked up this Pugna safe lane. They're looking to get that fast T1 tower, and they've yet to do so. But I feel like this is it here. I don't think the line can really get in a position to defend this, so we'll probably see this being brought down. Doom TP's back in, but without so Brumas, no Primal Split. And Admiral Bulldog just walks into this one. Concussive shots there, multiple TPs as well gets changed. S4, as mentioned, does not have the primal split, but it's his presence is just enough to kind of deter Na'Vi from going any further. But didn't EGM cancel his TP too? Under attack. I think he did. Um, yeah, what, there was a one TP. There was meant to be a yeah. There was a third person who was trying to TP in as well. So he has arcane boost in his level five and a half on Ventral Spirit. That's pretty good for him. Often you see and Ventral Spears don't get any kills and they just fall super far behind. The, the EGM farming support in action. Towers, kills, he, he does it all. So, the worry is still that this OD is farming very well in the mid lane. He's going to have around a maybe 9 to 10 minute Midas. And uh, with that up, his farm is... They haven't got the best lineup for dealing with OD. Like, you could doom him, but... There's other targets like Pugna who you may want to doom. Admiral Bulldog at bottom lane getting kind of nuked down here after getting fissured, but... Looks like he's okay for now. Fog is going in, gets a totem off, and there's the life drain. Admiral Bulldog getting very low, but they're just zoning him out to secure this tower. Korok, one more right click, he gets the last hit, and this will help him on his way to his mech. Just about five to 600 gold away from it now is snaking at top on the Admiral run. Bulldog getting chased down. Oh, bottom lane again. He gets a doom off, though. That'll well, perhaps save his life as uh, Bulldog will... Get himself to the safety of his own tower. Yeah, I thought he was about to get featured again. That was really close. Pugna almost killed him again. Yeah. Well, uh, Alliance and Navi very even here in the early game. Neither team with more than a 500 gold or experience lead. And Alliance, I, I think, pretty happy with how things are going right now. They haven't lost too many early towers to a Pugna. At the same time, they've got a Chen Ventral Spirit, so they can really the towers himself. Realistically, they can only either Dyer's deal with Spaces Tower Void or attack. OD. They don't have enough heroes on the map to control both of them at the same time, and both of them are actually pretty difficult to kill. Their draft is also very, like, timing dependent on this Brewmaster Blink Dagger. They can't really fight into the push until S4 has Blink Dagger up, and he has a Primal Split. So whenever Primal Split's on cooldown, they're not fighting. Not to mention they really need a Blink Dagger to go with it, which is going to be up in the next couple of minutes by the looks of things, so... When they have that, they're going to look to probably just take fight after fight. They'll have Lotus, probably Vanguard up at a similar time. He'll be nice and tanky. Doom will probably have his Midas and get close to a mech, so... Oh, well, actually, Chen can go for the mech. Yeah, Chen's almost uh, already got the buckler, so... Alliance's five-man will get pretty scary once they have this Blink Dagger on S4. Mid tower looks like he might go down without contest. S4 does have a split and just uses it really early, so he doesn't have to worry about the Chronosphere. 
Yeah, just want to bring down 1437 here, but Brax walks himself in. This is going to be a close one. The fissure block is there, and 1437 comes close to surviving, but the immolation damage is just enough. They want S4 following this. Chronosphere is there, and Bulldog, he's got Doom, but he's just being zoned out of this one. Can't actually come into play, but the Chen Hand of God heals up the Brewmaster, and S4 didn't even come close to being brought down there. Pops a regen rune, and he's ready to re engage if Alliance want to try and take a fight. I thought they were going to use the life drain on him, but Pugman was actually out of mana. He does have his mech up, and they can start forcing a few more towers. Doom has his minus up. How's S4 doing on his quest of Blink Dagger? It's 400 gold, so items kind of kicking on both sides. I think Brax is actually really poor, though. Just tread and pro man shield. Yeah. Considering how amazing the well he did in the offlane. Never mind. He, he had such a good time and that offlane was just walking all over Alliance. They were trying to go for kills, at least for the first five minutes, and they just couldn't find them. They were getting bullied. The dual lane of the Bristleback and Vengeful Spirit, but... It's been turned around since then. Eswell now bottom lane getting chased Radiant's away by Korra. Korra maybe gonna go attack. chase for this kill. Eswell bottling up, has a full three bottle charges, and... Korra, while well, he's getting some misses coming in, and not a whole lot he can do. Another decrypt blast, Radiant's and Eswell getting low. The chase is coming. Skyrath Mage is nearby, but... Without Loda a vision, has, without a concussive shot. Loda's built Vanguard. Man, I'm, I'm sad. I'm, I'm all about the van. You can get a Vanguard this fast, it's, it's not bad. Cost effective HP and HP regen. Meh. Nah. Cloak. Casual cloak. You want, you want the HP regen too, though. I guess, I mean, you could get, um, you could get a mech for the team, but Chen's building that. You just get a casual ring of regen. Easy, That's so they can do Vlads later. <laughs> Casual ring for pipe. It's so good. It's not that bad. Well, they're gonna go for a fast rush, and the Vanguard definitely helps here with some damage. Well, for those, actually, the chance to be tanking it up, and we'll see. Goose just being stacked on stack as Roshan gets brought low and lower. Navi looking like they want to try and take this fight. Braxis Kronos here in three seconds, and with that. It's like Alliance going to kind of be pushed away from the Roshan pit, they just insta doom up Brax, he gets swapped back as well, the Fissure not going to be enough to save his life, the stun from the low ground and Brax should be just chased down here, Bulldog will finish him off, meanwhile the main fight, Primal Splits come back up and this is looking like bad news for Na'Vi, they still got the mech from Korra, will be propped now, but with the Skyrath Mage ultimate, not even enough damage to kill off anyone here, there's your OD, Sandy's Eclipse comes out, gets two with it, the Ventral Truth and the Chen, but he pays for it with his life, 4 for 2 trade around the Roshan pit, 1437 will scurry away, back home will save his own life, but Alliance, if they want, could consider going back into the Roshan pit. They've lost the Chen, though, as well as a lot of the Chen's creeps, and looks like they don't mind too much about it. Roshan's fairly low. S4 just has to take this one to help out load him. With the Goose stack, they should be able to get Roshan here. Great Doom by Doombringer, and they swapped him to ensure the kill, too. If you can get a Doom on off the Void before the fight starts and not get destroyed by an Echo afterward, you're in for a good fight. So Earthshaker is not that farmed at all. He hasn't really been given that much space to farm, but they really need him so that Pieces of Void can get his initiate off. If they all jump him, then he can go in and return with an Echo Slam and Aftershock and Fissure of his own. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, just looking at the raw CS's, Na'Vi, they've got three core heroes all of decent CS, but the fights are just not going their way. That's the third death on your Faceless Void. OD picks up his first, but, uh, the other core heroes have not had a good time. Pugnus died twice this game, and sure, you've got this fast mech, but... It's still a 777 HP Pugna. It's not exactly the tankiest of heroes. Yeah, I mean... His strength is in tower sieging and not really fighting and surviving. Oh, Aki, gonna get blown up here. That's the combo we've been waiting for. Chronosphere into Mystic Flare. The combo is ridiculous. They're not done. They're still seeing at this top lane, but it's it's Loda here who killing Loda. Yeah, kind of out of the question. He's even got an Ogre Club on top of his Vanguard. Gonna start working on his BKB now. Yeah, I suppose he needs one too. I mean. What are they going to do? Best BKBs? Alliance on the flip side... They need to take out, start taking out T1s though, at this point, and... Limit Korok's farm. I think that Navi US has better late game, but that depends on Brax getting big enough and OD having enough time to buy with his minus. He did die once, but he has two kills in the process, and they still retain their T1 in mid and in the bottom lane, so Alliance... Just need to do something with his age of the Immortal. Loda going for Halberd next? Halberd's a really good versus her lineup. Hmm. It could be. B I, I feel like the B BKB also nice because you're against. That's true. Urshaga, BK Skyrath, OD as well. OD's damage output with BKB. Uh, he all have ages though. I think it's okay if they focus him. Yeah. So... Yeah, if you get BKB, they're not focusing you, I guess, is the one deterrent here. They're going to see a Doom, another Doom onto Brax. 
The blink in from S4, and we'll see it clap to follow. Brax has got zero backup here. Man, Admiral Bulldog has been doing such a good job on the Doom 2. He's 5 and 2. That double kill really changed things. And compare his farm to Brax, Brax not even that close to his Mask of Madness recipe. And Admiral Bulldog already complete with a blink dagger and He's almost got twice 1, the farm. Gold. Like, yeah. When you say compare, we're looking at 7k net worth to like, just over 3.5k, so... And usually you see uh, Faceless Void as the one who's able to shut down very important heroes like Brewmaster, but all he really did was get a kill on Aki, which is not really that important at all, and that's been his only kill this game as Faceless Void in 15 minutes time. Usually you'll see Radiant's Voids just like start dominating with like brown boots and portman shield. The Chrono get an easy kill. Granted we've seen some of them have like the help of Troll Battle Rage or something else like that, but still their lineup is geared to get a lot of kills with Chronosphere and until that or until they wait until a later game when Snaking can actually carry. Huh? Na'Vi are going to group up as five at top, and this is kind of the stage of the game where it's like, look, we've got our ultimates, we've got our mech, we have a pug now, we've got just five-man tower, so... They five-man group up at top, there is a Bristleback up there defending, and the problem is he has an Aegis. If he didn't have an Aegis, you can jump him as five, burst him down, and then try to bring down the tower, I don't think but... they can burst him down, though. Even no. if he didn't have the Aegis, he has 1600 HP and max Bristleback, and they have Chen Heal. Yeah, so, he's just gonna run in. <laughs> that, like, that's a really tall order, unless they catch him facing him in the Chronosphere, but if he spins around in the Chronosphere, or before the Chronosphere hits, it's insanely difficult to do. And they don't have the right items to do so yet. They need like a Beacon Beat or Sector Vice on OD so they can jump someone or he won't die. Um, and they also need at least a Mask of Madness on Faceless Void so he can do some damage and an Earthshaker blink at some point. And none of those are coming for probably a few minutes time. Yeah, it's... Right now, Na'Vi are really just digging from the bottom of the barrel as far as getting whatever farm they can get, getting whatever items they can, and none of these important items are coming anytime soon. OD is getting farm. That's probably the one here who's doing war right now. He's top of the net worth, sitting on just over 8k. Four stuff has an ultimate all coming out, so we'll be looking at that farm side device, but we look towards Alliance and... They, they can deal with a farmed OD, they've got Doom, they've got a Brewmaster who can throw him up in the air using that Primal Split, they've got plenty of answers to a farmed OD. Yeah, and he's gonna have a set of ice though, they just need to get ganks here and there, and the threat of S4's ultimate is just way too big, and he doesn't really hesitate. Uh, I remember watching the Cloud9 game, he got what, one ultimate off? That actually did something. He ended the game with one assist. Brewmaster already two kills, four assists, 18 minutes in. This is what you want to do as a Brewmaster. Get active, always threaten Narvi, force them to defend even though they don't really attack. want to. Yeah, make sure, you, like you say, like make sure you're being involved in the action and kills. Though. Or if, if there is an action and kills, you're the one who wants to be able to create those opportunities. And so far, that's what Ness has been doing. An alliance on the back of that has been able to secure Roshan, they're now pressuring tier 2 towers. There is a counter push coming bottom lane from Snaking, so he's doing the best he can to stall and delay, but Primal Split gets initiated in 1437, no way out for him. Gets taken out of the fight, and they're gonna throw up OD on the high ground here, but this is just kind of a stalling tactic as they focus the tier 2, so... Alliance will look to secure the tier 2 and then just back off and go for a smooth, clean retreat, which should be pretty straightforward for them. Spec is going for the BKB like you mentioned, and... The thing about S4, he doesn't hesitate. He gets a solo kill on a Skywrath Mage, he will blink, clap, and ultimate for it, and you have to just, like, a lot of Brewmasters wait for, like, two heroes, they look for a really good clap, and then they ultimate, but S4, he sees a small opportunity, he does it, it guarantees him a tower, and looks like Na'Vi, USO, trying to capitalize on the fact that he did use his ultimate for a solo Skywrath, and retaliating with a T1 tower of their own, but... Alliance, they still have the Aegis. It's just oh, expired. Okay, it's expired. Okay, That's this is a really thing. good time for them yeah. to go. No Aegis. There is a BKB on Bristleback, though. It's coming out on the Korea. That's so far away. Yeah, actually, no, it's, it's, it's back at base here. They're going to jump loading here. They see that there's no Aegis. They get the Mystic Flare from behind, though. Lotus tanking. Will it be taking off? They need the Chen Hand of God, but it wasn't even the, it was used. It wasn't It wasn't enough. And Admiral Bulldog now, underneath this tower, could be in some trouble. Hasn't been able to do enough damage. He popped off a Doom, but he gets brought down by Snake in great timing window coming out from Na'Vi. They brought down two and they're looking for a third S4. Chasing around the trees, he's gonna actually see his, team, oh, see his teammate EGM brought down. He can't do anything to Snaking. Snaking's bottling up. S4's got no blink available, takes damage. Yep, no blink for you. One more right click or two and he's gonna be brought down. Korok with the kill. Four for nothing in the top lane. The timing was just impeccable. They needed Navi. either Aegis or Brewmaster Ultimate and neither of them were up. They could have just yeah. waited until T2, but 
the five man is way too strong. Seeking is close again on a scythe of ice now on the back of that. And finally, a chronosphere and something goes Narvi's way. They, it, they took a lot to bring Bristle back down, but they eventually did. And they did have the BKB too. So they could have waited like 30 seconds and Alliance would have been so much stronger than they are now. And now they get a second tower with S4 down. It's the start of the swing. Na'Vi finding some momentum. They've got some confidence after beating IG earlier today. Some big comeback play in that game. And here they are again. Loader though has got a BKB. He's going to charge in. Na'Vi instant TP. They get stunned up by a 2 Euro Sentinel Storm. Korok as well as Skyrath Mage going down. Great micro and play coming out from Aki. Negates the retreat there. They get the tower deny as well. Alliance. They strike back against Na'Vi. Aki with the sentinel Tower plays and it depends on when Roshan responds. If it responds at the eight minute mark, it definitely goes their way. And they also still have pre mess ultimate, so I say it's very easy for Alliance to take a fight around the Roshan pit. And Shaker does have the money for a blink and he'll buy it up right now. So, hmm, the BKB on Bristleback is going to be key here. Also, there's a BKB coming on Doom, he's actually completed so. Double BKB for Alliance, and that's where Na'Vi, even though you've got this Blink on Earthshaker, you're, you've won a fight here or there. If Primal splits up, I just don't think you can fight Alliance. Double BKB plus Primal split is just too much to fight into. If they get BKB off before the Chronosphere, Void does not have enough physical damage to take him down. Not by any means. They really have to rely on Skyrath Ultimate uh, to burst those heroes down, so it's going to be imperative that Alliance pops those early. And it looks like it will be a rather longish Roshan respawn, a little more than two minutes time, and both teams eyeing that. Pit, Aki are ready with the Seder Tormentor in there, and how is Snaking doing on his quest of Scythe? He just Very needs... close. Yep, 700 gold. And that's, I mean, not, not a counter to Hexes, but it's, you can kill heroes, I'm oh, sorry, not a counter to BKBs, but you can kill heroes who have BKB. If you jump them and get a, a sheep on them before they pop their BKB, you can focus and burst them down. So. Or if he sheeps S4 as he blinks in. Yeah. That's going to be the most important thing. If that happens, that is almost a guaranteed one team fight on the spot. But that's a very unlikely uh, scenario. Depends on how fast he is. It's, on the reflexes. Braxis time walks in the mid lane looking for a potential jump on S4. This side of Vice is going to be the key item for Na'Vi, at least uh, for the next kind of five minutes of this game. It's what they've got to play around. Here comes Bulldog though from behind. He's got a zoom available, just going to blink in and use a level death here. They want 1437, but not willing to commit any ultimates to it. You doom him and suddenly you have Na'Vi taking a fight at you when you've just doomed a Skyrath Mage, which is probably not worth it, so he holds on to the doom for now. And OD 3600 gold. That is his scythe of ice. Just needs the ticket to get to the secret shop. Is already on its way. Bristleback picks up yet another ogre club too. That's nice. all taking a bit of damage there. Not gonna be too too drastic for him. Second ogre club. Sanjin and Yasha, Heaven's Halberd. I guess either or. I think Heaven's Halberd is really good. Um, it's not that great for evasion purposes against Faceless Void because it's ignored through Chrono, but it's really good against OD because ODs will almost never get MKB. Yep. Well, OD has got his size of ice now as uh, Navi D order, but they get jumped 1437. They pay the price of the great 3 hero Chrono They're trying to bring down Bullock. He's trying to Can they kill him before he gets the Doom off? No is the answer. He gets the Doom onto Snakey with the BKB's help. EGM goes down to start things off. Brax on the back lines goes down and the chase is on. Snaking's got no escape. Didn't even get to use his Scythe of Ice in that fight it looks like. And with that, Navi get cleaned up by Alliance. They Fantastic positioning by S4. He didn't get caught in the Chrono. Really nicely played, and it, it's a three hero Cronus here. It looks nice and all, but it's just not Radiant's enough. And Alliance now suddenly top. breaking on the high ground, blink up. They're trying to just push away Fog, who's do, doing some cheeky little fissure blocking here, but it's not going to be enough. The tier, tier three tower are going to be taking heavy damage here. Like, this is it's done, it's dead. 30 seconds on your OD. This is going to be at least one of these racks. They're going to probably go for the range racks first. It's the uh, squishier and the one that doesn't heal, so they'll get that. And they may even get the melee racks as well. They're in a great position to do so. One more hit, and there it goes. Uh, yeah, no Chronosphere. It's gonna be really difficult for them to defend, but at the same time, they're still, like, pretty tanky. Yeah. Um, they may be thinking they wish they had gone for the melee racks, as uh, they don't get the full melee racks there in the end. They get just the range racks. Alliance will almost always go for the range racks yeah. first. It's the safer play. Yeah, and they can do Roshan. Cool down on Chronosphere, 20 more seconds. Cool down on Brewmaster Ultimate, 40 more seconds. Those are the most important cooldowns to look at. I guess Doom too, but that's about the same timer as Chrono. Oh, Brewmaster Radiant's also has a BKB now, so... That was a great smoke timing too. It was 
they just completely caught him off guard because they expected him to do, do to be around the Roshan pit, and they caught OD before he was able to pop his sight device too. We'll see uh, Navi, Smoke, scout the Roshan. See, that's not being taken that they're going to risk this one. They've just lost a rack, so maybe they think they're kind of in a desperate position. They will make a commitment onto Roshan. Alliance, EGM is, is up there. Here comes the Howl. They see it. This is it. Navi, they're going to commit, or they're going to just run like hell right now. They're going to commit to this one. Here comes the BKB Doom. Doom onto Snakey. That's the end of his team fight. The fish are going to block it. Actually block Admiral Blue with the fight, but Eskel blinks his way in, they kill off Snaking to start things off. Korg is trapped in the pit as well, he's got no escape, he's used the mech, he can't even life drink using his Aghanim Scepter. And Na'Vi have lost three, possibly more to follow, the Cyclone gonna catch out the Earthshaker. Can he blink after this? I'm thinking, oh, he, thinking he can. They have a swap available. Well, Fog is still on the run, the Ensnare is gonna come out, and with that, Fog trapped in place, the goo, the cool spray, and Fog is... Well, he's done for. Blink, right click damage, more than enough. He can't get the TP out. Send back coming for, onto the Doom, and that's going to be Doom defending top lane. Fractal's up there pushing, so Doom can defend that while the rest of the team can finish off that melee racks in mid with four heroes dead. Admiral Bulldog, though. BKB, Blink in. Doom's the most important hero to Doom, which is the OD. And they can't really do anything about it. They Chronos here, but they don't have any damage. He can't sight the vice. They can't do anything to him. They can't uh, stun him with Earthshaker just because he gets a jump on them. So, fantastic play by them. A nice heads up play by EGM. Also, being able to scout that one out with the Wave of Terror. I mean, it was just pretty much a one fight as soon as he uh, doomed the OD and they wasted Chronosphere on a solo hero that was BKB. Yeah. Well, Roshan can now be finished off, but by Alliance. It's a nice and easy Roshan kill with just 2000 HP on Roshan and... Well, maybe not. I think this is not... I think Navi just have to try and contest this. They're kind of in a do or die position here. They know the Brewmaster Ultimate's not up. Sure, you haven't got Chronosphere just yet. Actually, you do, but it's in five seconds, so... You've got a small little window where you've got Chronosphere and your opponents do not have Primal Split. Brax goes time walking in, hoping that someone's in there that he can catch out, but not going to be the case. No, they can deal ward there. Why are they not deal warding they that ward? Past it. What? Yeah, that's to say, they just walk past it. <laughs> okay, they had vision. <laughs> but S4 is smoking in. And where is Doom? They're waiting for Panda Ultimate. It's up in one second, oh, and here they go. It. Dude, Navi just can't take this fight anymore. Alliance will secure Roshan and Lode has now got himself a trim to gold. He can finish off either Sun and Yasuo as his help with whichever way he wants to go. And he's going to be the one grabbing the Aegis. And he has a lot of HP, 2100 HP. Bristleback does not seem like it gets disabled during the Chronosphere. Uh, I don't think it does, so... No. Like, uh, they just don't have damage. I mean, OD is nice and all, but... Oh, Brax hiding in the work. woods. The Observer Wood spotted them. This is not a trap that's going to work. Alliance know what's going on. Why do on. they have an observer ward right there? I don't know, but it's, nothing just, that it's, it's just one in this game, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, what in the world? The BKBs come out. Korok is going to be the first one getting focused. There's no targets to live drain. Load of BKB up as well. Snaking's being doomed as per usual. Just going to accept his fate. Brax trying to TP out in his Cronus He gets swapped as well. It's a disaster for the Faceless Void. He's going to go down in the river, probably. Korok gets brought down by the Secret Shop. Brax still on the run. Time walks away. Mask Amanda's okay. movement speed, he'll survive, but... Who, who has that as a rule right there, really? <laughs> okay, is, it's either Aki or EGM, and... E whoever... EGM doesn't buy wards, come on, let's let's be real here. EGM buy wards, nah, he That's buys. just a game-winning ward right there. Yep. It, that just <laughs> seriously won them the game. That, that just... The entire Na'Vi, like, comeback plan was let's hide in the secret shop, get the jump on someone, Alliance is BKB and charging at him. Alliance have been getting the jump on them all the time. It's Radiant's either Bristleback getting jumped uh, or Admiral Bulldog running in and dooming Korok, or sorry, dooming Snaking before he can do anything. Well, with that, we look towards high Radiant's ground potentially being sieged here attack. for the last time. Na'Vi are going to just pop down the fissure and try and stall things up here. As Alliance are going to maybe wait for the Primal Split and Doom. Like, this is... At the end of the day, you've stood this Aegis for some time, your opponents are going to have 5 alive soon, and you're miss missing 2 key ultimates, so you may as well wait for the Primal Split. Also, Brewmaster about to hit level 16, so some big some big kind of timings coming up for Alliance, and hey, you're already ahead, no reason to kind of take unnecessary risks. It's a 13, 14,000 gold lead experience, about 14 to 15,000, and... Don't forget about the pipe on Aki, too. It's a really big worst Pugna, oh, yeah. and Earthshaker. Just 40 gold away from that, so... Navi just don't have item pickups of their own. The OD got this Scythe of Ice and has done absolutely nothing since picking it up.
I think it's really mostly the faceless wood getting shut down so hard. Yeah. One, five, and four. He can't kill anyone with Chronosphere, and even if they do, they have to dump like three ultimates. Like Chronosphere, Mystic Flare, and then Echo Slam or Sanity's Eclipse. And even then, I don't think they can kill Bristleback. Well, here come Alliance. The cool hat. You look like Duh. <laughs> Bristleback the <Yeah>. wizard. <laughs> little wizard. Dude, you're a little like, I don't know. A swamp little monster, and you're wearing a little wizard hat. It, do it doesn't match. My immersion, Volvo. My immersion. <laughs> well, Lode is going to breach the high ground here, and we'll see tier three tower just take. Look at these positioning of Aki, EGM, and Admiral Bulldog. There's like no way they can get a good Chronos here with their positioning. Two and heroes, they... maybe three max, and even then, Ventral Spirit won't get caught in it. Yeah. And she can sack herself if yeah. need be. I feel like s is just going to jump the first hero he can. Just blink in with a BKB clap and then Primal Split. Sinking's not even there. Sinking's actually split pushing top. If they go right now, Radiant's it's over because that means no hex before BKBs are possible. Mm -hmm. And no hex on s before he's pumped ultimate. So it, OT's actually a terrible tower seizure too. He, if, he sees, if he gets a small opportunity, he will go for it. Well, he's TP back now, so uh, no initiation just yet coming out from Alliance. No, they don't have urns either. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they don't have urns. But yeah, they earn on a uh, crystal back. Yeah, they usually have it on. I think EGM gets one. Went for the di dire side medallion instead, which uh, was was nice helping secure these roaches. But Loader would just get sent back home, and they'll heal them up. They've still got a decent amount of time left on this age, just so that they they, well, they might catch EGM here. Oh yeah, they have they have vision. Okay, that's cool. I'm looking at EGM solo Cronus here, but I mean. When you can't get much, you take what you can get, I guess. Yeah, not a big deal. No, no not a big deal at all for a lot. That's a Hail Mary smoke. <laughs> it's a Hail Mary smoke for a uh, five position Ventral Spirit. I mean, it's an EGM support, but still, it's it's a Ventral Spirit. That's not going to turn this game around. Alliance were back healing up anyways. It maybe delays their next push by 30 seconds or so, but that's just a minor inconvenience for Alliance. BKB on Brewmaster too. I mean, how do you stop their ultimates? You can't stop Doom, you can't stop Brewmaster once they pop their BKBs. If you Chronosphere them, you're gonna lose the fight. And if they get that jump on you, you're gonna lose the fight. So, pretty much the only hope is you catch them without BKBs, but Alliance has been just playing so smart and always waiting for Navi to be in a really bad position, like right now. Yeah. Alright, well. Navi, Braxton get a TP out, just barely. Ooh, the courier! It's been spotted, they're trying to find it, and Snare could bring it to ground, but they're not going to be able to get in range. They've only got one minute on the Aegis now. And OD, well, of all the runes to have for a high ground defense, he gets a double damage rune, so... That's still a terrible rune for If him. he gets doomed up, it's like... What's it going to matter? Yeah. If Void had it, maybe... But... Lotus is going to be careful with this Aegis timing. It's going to be expiring in about 30 seconds from now, so... Oh, so unfortunate! Age is dying as you die. Kind of, kind of thing could happen. That would be a, a, absolutely catastrophic for life. Looks like he's just going to intentionally die here. I like this. Don't cut it close at all. There's about 20 seconds left. Smart from Loader not to risk it at all. He'll just respawn and now can just play as if he, he doesn't have the ages as well. He, guess what? He doesn't have it. Bulldog going to TP in. Doom just onto snaking. This just looked to secure the Raxes. Perhaps Glit is available. As our Admiral Bulldog just gonna lead the charge on the melee Rax, S4 going in, just took the zone heroes out, the rest of his team are just focusing down Raxes, while Na'Vi get completely pushed back to their own fountain, both Raxes get claimed, and the Earth Panda gonna just evacuate out again, he leaves the Storm Panda behind, and that's just gonna throw people up in the air, S4 just being an absolute pest right now. What could you do? Alliance are already back in your jungle, they've just gone full retreat. That was a really, really smart play. They blew two ultimates, their two most important ultimates, and the Aegis. They got what they came for. They Rax, escaped yeah. completely unscathed. And what's Narvi gonna do? Try and push with two racks down at this point of the game? This far behind? No way. So, Alliance, take it easy. Wait for next Roche. And the only one big mistake that they took this game was losing the T1 on top and subsequently almost the T2 because they didn't have the BKB, they didn't have Panda Ultimate either. Um, and they didn't have the ages, so they just need to fight with their cooldowns up. Five on five, uh, if Alliance executes half decently, and in the, most of these fights they've been executing flawlessly, they should. Win. Well, this is this is kind of another hail mary coming out of Navi. They know the ultimates are on cooldown, the, the uh, Doom as well as the Brumas ultimate, and they're saying, look, we're down four Raxes. If we can ever push, it's going to be now, or at least try and win a team fight at the enemy base that can give us some money, give us some. But how many people have buybacks? Uh, like. 
Everyone on the dire side has buybacks. Yeah, Every that's, single that's person. Nasty. And th if they want, they can just they can just kind of stall this. They've got lift. They can just wait their time until they have these ultimate. Ten seconds till Brute Primal split. It's gonna be up in no time at all. Doom is already back up. This is not gonna end well for Navi. As soon as Primal splits back up, it's up now. They can just go in at at their pleasure right now. Lotus on the front lines has a reaver up and he has six sacks warpath too. He's hitting for 370 damage or so. The push is over, and they're gonna take casualties, it looks like. Korok doesn't really have a way out, gets four sub, could just TP here, and I think he may want to. They've gotta get back and defend. This this push is over. But there goes opportunity. They got half a damage on a T3, they lose a T2, but at the end of the day, Alliance, they don't die. Some cheeky play from Aki, had his creeps at the bottom lane, a Harpy and a Dark Troll, just adding some extra pushing power Super long to the creep waves. 245 out of three, that's okay. almost max. Slightly works in Navi's favor at this point when Alliance are looking to end the game ASAP, but I think Alliance will just go look to push and take a fight without Aegis, to be honest. Or try and kill two, or try and kill Brax. He gets out in time. He's just such a non thread He's got so little farm on this void. And uh, Navi just running out of options here. They'll buy a Veil on their Pugna. Get whatever they can for this last fight. They're going to smoke up, and it looks like the little drawings are. Look at this. Th those drawings are Navi drawings. Oh, sorry, what, a, a what? line stroke. Those pink lines. It's one, one of those lines is, a line, uh, is the uh, Navi ones, and one's actually a line. The line's like, look, they're going to try flankers from this direction. Like, so smart. They actually draw, drew that line, which is exactly where Navi are walking right now. They're ready for this. Radiance top tower they are defending the fallen. base. So. Position with a Hellbear right on the side there. Trying to just negate any kind of side flank. And they see that no one defending T4s. Attack. It's a dead giveaway. They're pinging right here. They're seeing, look, they could be right there, and guess what? They were right there 10 seconds ago, but they backed off because they've got to defend. And they had great positioning too. EGM's there to pop the smoke. They find him, and then the melee heroes can immediately pop their BKBs and jump yep. on anyone else that they see. So it was just fantastic position by Alliance. They are not taking any risk in trying to secure this victory. Yeah, the only way Alliance lose a fight is if someone like either Doom or Panda gets insta hexed and focused down Radiant's before they can pop their ultimate, and like the other one gets chrono speed before they can pop I think it's ultimate. really only Doom. Panda is... he's some way important, but Doom is the real big factor because he just completely shuts down the OD. Well, there'll be a send back onto Loda. It looks like uh, the push will be delayed for now. Loda maybe thinking he wants to finish his... Uh, he could buy BRTs first. if he wants to, but... Yeah, mm. again, no need to take risk. Wait for Roshan, it's gonna be one minute's time. Get yourself an Aegis, get yourself a Cheese, and Nar be really stand no chance at that point. EGM's on Roshan duty here, so... They know it's sometime within the next minute. He's they... like an Aki creep right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably check Aki's probably microing this whole team, knowing, it, knowing Aki's micro, so... It's like, guys, this game's in the bag, like, I'll, I'll, I'll micro us. You guys can go have your little, your snacks, your potty breaks, whatever it, you, it, whatever it may be. And, uh, well, another five-man smoke. Na'Vi, unfortunately, do not know the Roshan timer. They're probably going to try and go scout this one out, but not going to find anyone there. And Lotus is going to walk right into him. Will reveal Bristleback is not a target you wouldn't be going on, though. Bristleback, uh-oh, he sees Na'Vi. Thrax going to be maybe forced to time walk away from this one. He does not want to turn a current so not on a Bristleback. Meanwhile, on the side here, he goes Doom. Charging in, gets the Doom onto Snaking with that. This is looking like a bad fight for Navi to take. 1437 going to be the sacrificial land. He goes down to start things off. Bulldog still chasing, has a blink in a couple seconds. Good blink forward. Brax is going to turn and Kronos to help cover his retreat. Time walk away, but there's a blink and Doom. Level death, Snaking's getting close to death. There's an Aghanim Scepter. He can't get the Doom off of him. Aghanim Scepter, Doom, too strong. Bulldog gets another kill for his team, and Snaking has buyback. Does not want to use it, but he's going to have to. Buyback from the OD and I've line. rarely seen Ag's Doom actually have an effect on the game. Yeah, he just, it, this time it actually chase, does chase, something. Chase. It does a lot more damage too, yeah. to be fair. Even if you don't get the yeah, that much extra duration there. Was it close to wearing off on the OD? It, uh, it, must it be... was like five or six seconds. Okay. I mean, he then he was in range for a pretty long time though. Yeah. I think it extended it by like six or seven, which is 660 or 770 damage. And Bulldog has 5.5k, so... Well, and load as hard. <laughs> the uh, problems just surmount for Navi. I'd love to see a refresh on Doom, but with the playmat, looks like he may just go for a Shivers Guard. Yeah, he's got a Shivers Guard coming out, so. Here's your Aegis as well. Bristleback, Heart of Trask isn't enough survivability. He says, I want this Heart. Uh, sorry, the Aegis as well. And with that, Alliance just in such a strong position. Their map vision in the enemy base is 
complete. They can see absolutely everything Navi do. Wards all over their base, bottom lane, middle lane, just outside their base. It's brutal how little Navi can move around their map around the map without being spotted. This is the last last fight. Yep. Well, 40 minutes in, and the Alliance it looks like they can finally completely break Navi. They've been bending, Snake their wheels bending so off an army. Oh, look at him go. He says, look guys, there's still hope. I'll take down these two Chen creeps. I'll leave one though. He can send the message to the rest of Alliance that we're still defending. We're still looking to hold. It's going to have to be everything coming in perfectly. Urshaker needs to hit the Echo Slam of Lifetime. But guess what? Echo Slam on cooldown for 50 Radiant's seconds. So I don't know what the plan's going to be. Loda. Just Aegis. Right click, right click, right click. Tower just taking pot shot after pot shot in. Just kind of game, not on loader, not on a heart of trash. Aegis bristleback. There goes your void. He gets a chronos. We misses S4 by the skin of his teeth. The Juke got on the OD though. Snake gonna get taken out of the fight. He tries to get back to his fountain, but the damage is gonna be too much. Fog goes through the deny, gets the deny, but it's GG Alliance. To take themselves another win here and have slowly clawed themselves back in the TI4 group stage. Starting off today, one win, four losses. I think they're back to even. I think they're four and four. Yeah. It was a very well-constructed draft, and they played extremely well in the early game. They shut down the Void so that he was a non-factor the whole entire game. They just ignored him, positioned well to minimize damage from the Chronosphere, and then Admiral Bulldog, Tunnel Vision, on uh, snaking the whole entire game. Every single Doom went onto the OD, and that's exactly what they needed to do to win, because he was the most farmed hero, by far, on Narvi. Yeah, it was like a full protect one once you got to the late game here. They had so